What's up, traders? What do you think causes a financial crisis? Overconfidence, bad decisions, and panic. The result, loss of employment, bankruptcies, and a painful recovery. My name is Angie, and today I want to talk to you about some of the world's most devastating financial crises throughout history. Please make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel, thumbs up, and don't forget to ring on the notifications bell. And likewise, my friends, I do hope to see all of you on our social network. Let's get started. Let's start with the interesting credit crisis of 1772. Uh, during the span of 1760 till until 1770, London was considered the financial hub of the world due to its rapid economic expansion from colonial possessions and trade. I guess nowadays what we can say happened is a credit hype due to over-optimism. You have to understand that back in those days, it was hard to check each individual's level of debt and the ability to pay back the borrowed funds. People were confident in the banking system and relied on them for further economic expansion. Unfortunately, as it often happens, one person ruined it for everybody. In 1771, Alexander uh, Fordick, a partner in a private London bank, lost a lot of money by betting that the East Indian Company shares will fall in price. He took money from the bank to cover his losses and didn't tell anybody about it. When the bank started having financial difficulties and the other partners started to ask questions, Alexander and his wife fled to France to avoid debt repayment. The bank was forced to shut its doors, followed by another badly operated bank called Air Bank. My friends, when the second bank was forced to shut down due to bankruptcy, people started to worry and people, uh, when people are scared, people panic. Uh, creditors began to form long lines in front of banks to demand cash withdrawals. Uh, the panic quickly spread across Europe as well as the American colonies. Uh, many historians actually believe that this credit crisis of 1772 was one of the biggest benefactors that led to the um, discord between Great Britain and the American colonies, which led to the Boston Tea Party in 1773 when the American colonists, angry at Britain for imposing taxes, dumped 342 chests of, imp uh, of imported tea into the harbor. The event was the first major defiance between uh, the British rule over the colonists. The next event that I would like to uh, talk to you about is called the Great Depression. Uh, when the First World War ended in 1918, American men came home, delayed projects, buildings, and business activities obviously resumed with a splash of economic prosperity. This exciting time in the United States is referred to as the Roaring Twenties. Now, clearly, people had more money to spend, and there were a lot of uh, like new inventions that became widely popular during that time. Like, for example, a vacuum cleaner with a disposable bag and uh, electric washing, car, uh, washing machines. Also, Ford's Model T car was also a very popular purchase during that time. Well, it seems like history simply repeats itself. And actually, we mentioned this many times during our trading lessons. Because things seem to be looking good, the, the economy is flourishing, the banks have no problem giving out loans uh, so that people uh, can have and spend even more money. Businesses are making money, people are making money, life is sweet, right? Well, as more and more money started to flow in, people simply did not know what to do with their newly accumulated wealth. The stock market became the new frenzy and people from all classes started uh, investing to make more money. Uh, the stock market uh, was so hot that people were pouring in their life savings and even borrowing money from banks in an attempt to multiply their investments. In the meantime, my friends, the banks are also investing in the stock market. And in some cases, the banks actually borrowed um, the clients deposited funds to invest. By 1929, um, uh, American wealth doubled and the Dow Jones Industrial Index was up by 218% from 1922. Now, a bit too much uh, and a bit too fast. Companies are unable to keep up with the price of the shares and the newly acquired items by mass population are not as in demand as they used to be. While production is slowing and salaries are falling, the interest rates are rising 
uh, from 3.5% to 5% uh, through 1928, and then up to 6% uh, in August of 1929. Now, remember all those people that took out um, uh, loans to invest? Ouch. People don't realize the importance of the over, um, didn't realize the importance of the overheated market until Black Thursday. This was October 24th, 1929, which marks the start of the Great Depression. Newspapers and headlines are all about company liquidations. Liquidation is basically the same thing as bankruptcy, but bankruptcy is for individuals and liquidation is when companies and businesses are forced to shut down. Now, you can probably guess what happened next, right? Panic selling! 12.9 million shares were sold on that dreadful day, that Black Thursday. Now, the next uh, stampede came on the following Black Tuesday, uh, which was October the 29th. The Dow Jones dropped by a whopping 12% and record-breaking 16.4 million shares were sold. Now, remember I told you people spent all their life savings on these investments and shares, um, on shares that now became worthless. And even worse, of course, for the ones that borrowed uh, money and took out loans to invest. They are now in debt on top of that. Now, during the three years that followed, uh, the Dow Jones dropped 90% of its value from its peak in 1929. Clearly, we already mentioned and understand that companies are forced to shut down and people are unemployed. The unemployment rate was close to 25% at that time. What's even more horrifying is, uh, now guys, check this out, is that banks that borrowed money from the client's accounts to invest, clearly they also lost money. And people were getting back 10 cents for each $1 that they deposited in the bank. I can't even imagine, my friends. A disastrous cycle that was felt across the entire world. The monstrous economic uh, recession lasted actually until World War II. It's ironic how the start of one tragedy can put an end to another tragedy. Now think about these factors when you are trading and investing. Greed started it and fear destroyed it. How about the housing bubble of 2008? My mind is screaming literally, are we ever going to learn from past mistakes? The financial crisis came after a similar dot-com bubble in, in the 1990s when giant technology companies um, uh, had a massive growth uh, after the adoption of uh, the internet. When the tech bu bubble busted, only large companies like Cisco and Amazon, for example, were able to survive after losing most of their ma uh, market capitalization. Angie, what's a bubble? What are you talking about? Let me briefly explain. You guys already know that whenever we are blowing a bubble, eventually it's, it pops, right? Well, this is kind of what happens on the market sometimes. When there is no demand for something, people don't need it and don't buy it. There is too much available of something that people don't need. The price drops. When there is demand for something, especially if the, uh, the item or the asset is scarce or limited, this drives the price up. Uh, so the price goes up. The thing is that whenever something is new, something new is released, there is a huge hype about it and potentially profitable perspectives. It's almost like people lose their minds with greed again. Everyone starts purchasing it. The price of these items or assets becomes overstretched to expensive according to normal standards. And then the demand slows. Nothing lasts forever. And the price falls drastically. I guess we can uh, kind of say again, Greed causes the bubble and fear causes the pop. And so back to the housing bubble. People were looking for a new way to invest. And they said, hmm, well, why not mortgages? We haven't tried this yet. Now, I'm going to try to keep the story short because in essence, history simply repeats itself. Uh, mortgages um, attracted... Um, Investors, because they seem safe, you get an interest on the payments, and if the owners are unable to pay their mortgage house payments, you got possession of their house. Banks bought mortgages from lenders and then sold shares of this pool of mortgages to investors. These are called mortgage-backed securities. 
Of course, people see an opportunity to make a buck and the herd instinct kicks in and everybody is rushing to the banks. Greed is a crazy thing, my friends. As investors started to make more money, uh, as investors started to make money, other companies started to feel left out. For example, insurance companies also wanting to get in on the piece of the pie, started issuing credit default swaps, uh, CDS. This is basically like a derivative that pays out if a mortgage borrower is unable to make payments. In other words, insurance. So uh, during that span of time, um, the amount of credit insurance, my friends, check this out, jumped from $900 billion dollars to more than $62 trillion. My goodness gracious, my friends. The problem is that the insurance companies did not have this many funds, this much funds to cover in case the unexpected happens. But then again, what is insurance for? It's for the unexpected, right? So what had happened was people were, were uh, once again blinded by the light. Well, no, not by the light, but uh, I guess we can say blinded by the greed is a better comparison. Uh, there was uh, so much demand for housing and mortgages loan that loans are now being given out to people with a low income and a, b a bad credit score. A bad credit score means that you've either never had any credit or that you got a credit before and that you were not able to pay it off. Well, uh, what do people with a low income and a bad credit score need to get the loan? So they don't read the fine print and take out credits on a loan that they simply are not going to be able to pay off. Now, regardless of what the case may have been, the repercussions were disastrous. The point that I want to make is that this insane toxic cycle led to a total default collapse uh, by October of 2007. 3% of uh, the United States home loans are in the process of foreclosure. 3%. Uh, so people are getting kicked out of their house. Another 7%, my friends, together, this is 10%. Another 7% is past due on their payments. The market is over flooded with foreclosed homes, which means what? As I mentioned earlier, supply overcomes uh, uh, demand, uh, overpowers demand. Too many houses and no buyers in 2008. Pop goes the bubble. Everybody took a hit. It was just like the domino effect. Uh, now, bear with me now. This is where it gets interesting. Investment banks and insurance companies go under. The government is forced to help out the largest companies and investment firms. But still, but still, on September the 15th of 2008, we saw history in the making. One of the biggest investment firms, Lehman Brothers, uh, Brothers uh, went and um, were forced to uh, shut down and uh, file for bankruptcy. The bank had $600 billion in assets. Uh, come on now, guess what happened next? Panic again! Uh, to make the picture more simple and more clear, people uh, pulled out their investments from risky assets like stocks and turned to treasury bonds. This is where you loan the government money and earn an interest over uh, over a period of time. It's safer, but it yields a lower return. During that time, two million jobs were lost, uh, lost during the last four, just in the last four months of 2008, and uh, this period in the United States was actually dubbed as the Great Recession, the sharpest decline in economic activity after the Great Depression, which took a, a very long time to recover. My friends, dear traders, I guess today I really wanted to tell you a few interesting stories about the financial market because it's interesting and it's important to know if you want to become a professional trader and investor. Market crashes and periods of financial crisis, it's unavoidable and also quite unpredictable, as we well know with the recent ongoing coronavirus pandemic, which has caused financial difficulties across the globe. The thing in the world of traders, uh, the advantage of a limb trade is that you can make money on both price rises when the pr and when the price falls. Uh, there is also a huge variety of different assets to choose from. Take a look and um, 
at the different indices and stocks and likewise uh, uh, cross currencies, crypto and commodities. Uh, my dear friends, if you enjoyed my masterclass today, I do hope that you will give me a like. Make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel and ring on the notifications bell. And I do once again hope to see all of you on our social networks. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Angie. Learn and earn with a limb trade. See you next time. Thank you.